Use case number four is on grid with PV, but without a battery. So this time, why do we want to do this? We want to use uh, PV power as, as well as we can, uh, again, to, to push down our, our energy cost from the grid. We can still feed in if it's uh, possible or legal in my, in, in my region. Um, again, it's impossible if it's not activated. And then this is basically equivalent to a, a grid-connected inverter. Uh, except that if you if you want to connect with a grid connected inverter and you're not allowed to inject, for example, then you would need an energy meter. Uh, you need to make sure that uh, you have a communication between your inverter and the energy meter to just make sure that you're never backfeeding anything into the grid. So you can avoid all of that by just connecting all your loads to the any grid because it will handle all that for you. It will make sure inside that it's not backfeeding into uh, the grid if you don't have feed-in activated. So the benefit of this uh, use case is that you don't need to invest into batteries, but you can still use PV power as required to reduce your energy costs. And then, obviously, you still have this uh, possibility later to add batteries if you like, or if the battery uh, prices come down, to then later add that uh, UPS and off-grid functionality that, of course, you, you can't provide without batteries. And then finally, use case number five. Uh, which is again on grid and this time with a backup generator. So this is like your your maximum uh, system in a sense, uh, at least when you're using a single inverter. So in this case, uh, you would require an external energy source selector, as I've described earlier, which is the part right here, because we have a single AC input. We need to have uh, some some way of, of uh, isolating multiple AC sources from each other. But again. The AnyGrid takes the guesswork out of quick switching, out of synchronization, etc. So here the benefit is really guaranteeing power to your loads under all conditions. You might have uh, the grid that you can use. You can obviously prioritize PV if you wish. And even if the grid fails and it's in the middle of the night and you have a small enough battery to not get you across the night, then you can still automatically start the AC generator as required to power your loads and potentially charge your battery from the AC generator as well. So now for some uh, better understanding, I'd like to look at uh, some of the special features of the AnyGrid devices. So the first one is a closer look at the AC output source priority. Now, there's a lot of text here, and I know it's not good practice to put a lot of text on, uh, on, on slides like this, but I want to make sure that when we give you uh, this presentation and send that to you as a PDF, that you can also use that to look things up. Uh, and to get a good idea of, of how things work, as opposed to you know just having a, a single webinar, and then maybe later if you want to look something up, then then you might not you know remember what was being said. So don't worry, you don't have to read all of this. I'll I'll explain it to you now. It's just for for your information for later, and of course that goes for the entire presentation. So uh, the AC output source priority, I think, needs some uh, some explanation for you to to grasp how this. Uh, this unit is deciding on, on the various priorities. So we have uh, three options, which are listed here. We have USB, SUB, and SBU. And uh, those acronyms stand uh, for the, the order of the priority. So we have utility solar battery, then we have solar utility battery, and then we have solar battery utility. So let's start off with uh, the first one, the utility solar battery. So this is the scenario where solar isn't actually that important to you, or you might have a very small PV array just to keep your battery topped up or, or whatever. But basically, uh, the reason you're using the AnyGrid is to handle uh, your uh, handle scenarios where the grid fails. So in that case, uh, guaranteed power is more important than the cost of power, for example. So in that case, you want to prioritize the uh, the grid or the utility as a first priority. You'll use solar if the grid fails, and then battery to make up for, for uh, if you don't have enough solar power. The second priority is, or the priority option, is solar utility and battery. And uh, this one will prioritize PV as your first priority. So whatever energy you're producing from your, your solar modules, your solar panels, uh, you'll be, be able to use that directly for your loads and obviously charging a battery at the same time. Uh, 
And as a second priority, you are using utility. And in this case, we don't have a hard switchover between the grid and the off-grid scenario. But instead, what we're doing is, uh, let's say you're producing one kilowatt from your PV, and you need uh, two kilowatts for your loads. Well, then one kilowatt will come from solar, and the, the remaining kilowatt will be mixed in from the grid at the same time. So there's no hard switching in this scenario. And only if uh, those two are not sufficient, and it's obviously it's up to you, there's a, a parameter setting, you can decide how far you want to discharge your battery before this happens. But at some point, if you're producing less energy than you're consuming uh, between solar and utility power, uh, then it will automatically switch over to battery, or basically as soon as the grid fails, it will automatically switch over to battery mode. And then it will simply discharge your battery as long as it can to provide power to your boats. Of course, if in the meantime you have enough PV coming in again, PV will then uh, increase the battery voltage again to keep your battery topped up. So uh, this middle scenario I think is most useful for Western countries where you have a more or less stable grid, but your priority is you just want to save uh, power on your utility bill. And uh, maybe you don't want to cycle your battery, for example, uh, because that's what you would essentially be doing in this scenario is you're, you're reducing uh, the, the cycling on your battery. And the last one is if you really want to have every watt of, of power that you produce in your PV array, um, you want to use that as much as possible. And to do that, you're not only using your solar power, but you're also discharging your battery. And again, it's up to you how far you want to discharge your battery on a regular basis. But uh, in this last scenario, you are specifically using your battery, you're cycling your battery to make the most of your PV energy. So for example, in the evening, uh, when the sun has set, you still purposely want to use power that you've stored throughout the day from your battery for your loads. So that's this last scenario where, uh, again, you want to prioritize PV to save uh, utility costs, and you also additionally want to make the most use out of your battery uh, to be able to, to capture every, every watt hour that, that you work, to be able to use every watt hour that you've captured from solar. Next, we have the battery charger source priority. So really, there's only these two priority settings that we need to operate efficiently. Uh, the first one was deciding how your AC output is powered. So how are your loads powered? At any one time, are they powered by solar, utility, or battery, or all three? Or at least two of those three. Uh, now, here we're talking about the battery charger source priority. So this is a bit different to setting in that uh, this is not how we're powering our loads directly. This is now we're deciding how we charge our battery. So for example, we might purposely not want to use the grid to charge your battery because then we're just shuffling around power. We might use uh, only PV to charge your battery because uh, the battery is only supposed to be a buffer for the solar energy that we consume. So this setting is more or less independent from the previous setting. So here too, we have three options. The first one is solar first. So basically, if there is solar energy available, regardless of how much, that will be used to charge your battery and nothing else at that point in time. As soon as the sun sets, or if we have, for example, snow on our PV array, or if really there is no energy coming in at all from solar, then the utility uh, will be used to charge uh, your battery. And you can change the, the setting on how much current you want to take from utility for charging. So you can use a, a small setting for that. You can say, okay, I only want to charge from utility with 10 amps. And uh, when the sun is shining, you can charge with up to 80 amps, for example. Uh, then we have the solar and utility, where we're using both simultaneously to charge the battery. And then finally, we have the only solar setting, where we're absolutely forbidding any charging from happening from, from the AC input. So I think the last one is, is quite obvious. We're just completely disabling charging from the, the AC source. But I do have a small warning for you. Um, and that's described in, in this text down here. Uh, basically, the AnyGrid needs to power itself, of course, to be able to, to provide uh, the AC signal when it's in off-grid mode, et cetera. And it does that uh, from the battery terminals. So it, it will power itself uh, from the battery side. So now, conceivably, what could happen, if you're living uh, in, a, in a region where you might have uh, snow during the winter, obviously that depends on 
on where the system is installed. It's not going to be a huge issue around the equator. But uh, if you're living in North America, for example, or in the mountains, it will be. Uh, and let's say uh, you want to only use uh, solar energy to charge your battery. Well, then you would take the only solar setting, for example. Well, what will happen is eventually, uh, if you do have snow on your PV array, and there's literally nothing at all coming in from your, your PV side, well, then slowly but surely, uh, the, the any grid inverter will drain your batteries over a long period of time. And to avoid that from happening, uh, we recommend uh, that you do not use this setting in, in those scenarios where you could have snow on, on, on your PV modules, for example, but that instead you use the solar first setting. So you can be sure that during the day when the sun's shining, there's definitely nothing charging the battery uh, from the grid, only from solar. And then when the sun is not shining, so again, for example, if there's snow on the roof or also during the night, uh, then the grid will be used for charging, but then you can use a very small charging current, so only two amps on the battery side, so that's like around about uh, 98 watts, roughly, um, that you're allowed to charge uh, from the grid. And what that will do is it will offset the self-consumption of the any grid, and at the same time, a little bit more to just like almost trickle charge your battery with, with one amp. So you've seen the, the two priority settings. It really is that simple. Uh, you'll see later you can still override those two priority settings with timers, but that's like your, your basic configuration that you need to set up. Those are like uh, the two most important settings because they will define what use case uh, is valid for your particular system. So now we look at the uh, overload bypass as a special feature. So you might ask yourself the questions, well, uh, as, as opposed to a grid inverter, which is connected in parallel to the grid, where basically if you exceed the power rating of a grid inverter, it doesn't matter, uh, because automatically you will be pulling that power from the grid. Uh, the downside from that is uh, if, if you're trying, because nowadays obviously there's a lot of grid connected uh, inverters which have a storage as well. Um, I've seen uh, several times and there's a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm based in Germany, so I, I visit a, a PV symposium once a year. And actually we had, uh, I think it was the Fraunhofer uh, Institute, uh, which was looking at at least 10 different uh, grid connection storage systems. And what was very interesting is they were very slow. In the sense that, let's say you have a two kilowatt load, for example, let's say a vacuum or something. And uh, of course you want to prioritize your PV power. That's typically the reason why you install a grid connected storage system. So uh, you will want to provide that two kilowatt out of your battery if the sun isn't shining, for example, at night. And uh, what will happen is it'll take a certain amount of time for a grid connected inverter to realize that it needs to power this two kilowatt load, not from the grid, but instead from the battery. It needs to basically power up the whole uh, conversion from, from your DC battery to the AC, et cetera. And uh, this might seem strange to you, but this will take anywhere from half a second to a second up to one and a half minutes, which is of course insanely long. So there's really a lot of uh, even like market leaders out there which have very slow systems in the sense that if you, you can imagine, for example, if you're cooking something and you have um, a, a heating element which will turn on and off maybe every second or, or every few seconds, that this type of system will not be able to cope with that load. It will do, like sometimes it will accidentally inject into the grid because, well, your load has turned off and it's trying to provide two kilowatts now. And uh, the opposite will happen as well. Uh, you're consuming two kilowatts and the system just hasn't caught up. It, it's not taking the two kilowatt out of the battery, but instead it's coming out of the grid. So this kind of thing cannot happen uh, with the any grid if you're working in off-grid mode. Because obviously if you're disconnected from the grid, well then there's no way the grid can provide any energy at that instant in time. So this is a, a very different beast in the sense that this inverter will react within literally milliseconds to your loads because it has to because otherwise the voltage would drop. So that's that's basically the, the, the difference between a, a grid inverter and, and this any grid inverter which is actually based more on an off-grid inverter. But uh, to make a long story short, uh, I, I want to get to what the overload bypass does for you. Well if you're if you're connecting your loads uh, on the any grid and the any grid is basically um, potentially disconnecting your loads from the grid. It means it's in between the two, so it's in series with your loads. So it means that all of the power flowing to your loads has to flow through the inverter, has to flow through the end grid. 
So the questions you might ask yourself is, well, what happens if I try to take more than five kilowatts out of the any grid? And that's a very valid question. That's why we have the overload bypass. So basically, uh, let's say you are in the scenario where you have a connection to the grid. Obviously, if you don't have any connection to the grid, and you don't have any other AC source, well then, if you're overpowering your inverter, it, it can only shut down to protect itself. If, if you're demanding more than five kilowatts for a long period of time, the inverter will simply turn off. Uh, if, however, you do have an AC source which is capable of sustaining the five kilowatts or more than that, well then, uh, the inverter, if you, if you activate the overload bypass on the any grid, then as soon as it senses that it's no longer able to cope with your energy demand, it will simply switch to grid mode. And then, uh, basically, it's just bypassing the whole inverter entirely. It's just passing the power directly from the grid to your loads. And it can do this very quickly, same speed as typical switchover times of 10 milliseconds if you're in UPS mode, which you probably are in most cases. And, uh, and then it will provide you with up to 40 amps of AC power. And if you multiply that together, 40 amps times 230 volt AC, that yields you around 9.2 kilowatts of power that you can pull through the any grid. So it's almost twice its, uh, its initial power rating or its nominal power rating. And in fact, for the, uh, the three kilowatt, the smaller model, it's also 40 amps. So you could theoretically uh, pull up to 9.2 kilowatts out of the three kilowatt model simply because it's passing the grid power through to your loads uh, if, if you exceed the three kilowatt nominal rating. So you might ask yourself, well, what happens if I exceed even that? Well, then at some point, because the power is flowing through the inverter, it has to protect itself. At some point, the, the traces, the cables would overheat. So we have an integrated uh, uh, resettable fuse, which I showed you at the beginning of the session, which will simply pop out uh, if, that, if that risk happens. And, uh, and then, well, it's up to you to just put it back in. There's no need to buy any fuses or anything, but that's just like the ultimate uh, uh, layer of protection for the any grid to protect itself. Now I'd like to go into uh, the methods of uh, battery current limitation. Now, depending on what kind of uh, battery you're using, I know there's a lot of pressure from the market and, and from customers to choose the smallest possible battery. Uh, technically, that's not a good thing. Uh, economically, I understand that, obviously, because batteries tend to be by far the most expensive uh, portion of a solar system, if, obviously, if there is a battery included in the system. So typically, uh, in, in at least a real off-grid system, a battery will make up like 50 to 60% of the total system cost. So that's obviously a huge chunk. So people will try to, even if they're using a battery, they will try to keep it as small as possible, uh, simply to save that money. And uh, in, in order to, to work with that, we need to be able to limit how much current is going in and out of the battery at any one time. Because if, you're, if there's a tendency to take batteries which are well, almost too small for the system, then we need to figure out a way to, to get power from elsewhere so we don't overload the battery. So in that case, uh, basically the battery is, is too weak uh, compared to the five kilowatt or three kilowatt, depending on what model you take, uh, that you're trying to provide to your loads. So we, we have this split up into the charging and discharging current. So the charging is relatively simple. Uh, typically, you'll find for, regardless of whether they're lead-acid batteries or lithium battery, uh, you'll find a maximum charging current. So uh, let's say, for example, your maximum charging current is 40 amps for this particular, uh, for a particular example system. Well, then you can just go into a settings menu number two. Uh, and, and, and just uh, for your information, there's about 35 settings roughly uh, on the unit, 35, 38, something like that. Um, so not hundreds of settings, so it's actually a lot easier to set up than, than a lot of other devices. Uh, but I think the settings uh, really do make a lot of sense and they, they still keep things as simple as possible. So in settings menu number two, you can limit the total charging current. Now, regardless of whether uh, you've set a priority to charge from PV or from grid or from both, this is like a total cap. Uh, it will add together your charging from PV and from uh, AC if activated. And then it will simply cap uh, anything higher than, for example, 40 amps uh, then, uh, to make sure that your battery is not receiving too much charging current. Uh, too much charging current can, can cause 
well, several things, but two main things would be overheating the battery is the obvious one for, uh, for lead acid batteries, or if you're using uh, lithium batteries, uh, then it's, well, it's not worse, but it's worse for the system, but it's better for the battery. Typically, if you have a battery management system inside, uh, then you, you will need to, uh, well, BMS will simply notice that there's too much current going into the battery and will simply shut down. So basically your battery will just turn off uh, if it's uh, well protected or it could even be damaged if it's not well protected. So this is an important setting if you're using small batteries. Uh, you can limit the charging current uh, that, that's going into the battery. Uh, taking current out of the battery, obviously to power your loads, uh, is a lot, well, it's a little bit more difficult uh, because if you're in a pure off-grid environment and you have uh, no AC source, so you just have PV, a battery, and your load. Um, if you're exceeding uh, the maximum current of your battery, there's no other energy source. Uh, the, like obviously if you're using PV, then all of the, the, the PV power is being piped automatically right to the loads. That's always the first priority. It's just uh, the way the unit is set up. And then anything that's missing would come out of the battery. But at some point, if you're overloading your battery, if you're discharging uh, with more current than you can set up here, well, the only thing the inverter can do is shut down to protect your battery. Um, I think uh, what's more uh, interesting is if you have an AC source. So for example, if you do have a grid connection, uh, then this is uh, very similar to the overload bypass I discussed uh, before, where if you overpower, like you're demanding more power than the inverter can deliver, then it will automatically switch to the grid temporarily. Well, that's the same thing will happen here, except now you can decide at what discharge current that happens. So before it was just a pure power thing where if you exceeded the nominal power of the unit, it would switch to the grid. In this case, you can say, well, at, uh, let's say, let's take the same 40 amps, for example. Um, my battery can only handle 40 amp uh, discharge current. Um, then you can, uh, in settings uh, menu number 41, you can just set that up. And then automatically, as soon as it detects that uh, your battery is being discharged with more than 40 amps, it will temporarily switch over to the grid. If obviously, if the grid is available, if it's not available, the only thing you can do is shut down. Um, what's important to know here as well is that, uh, well, depending on how you size your system, this shouldn't happen <laughs> if you size your system well. Uh, this whole uh, overload bypass thing, or in this case, if you limit, uh, if you, uh, limit the discharge current of the battery, uh, that's not to say that this should happen like 50 times a day. Uh, obviously, this is a hard switchover, so we have two relays which are involved, which will, uh, uh, which are relays that uh, try to switch at zero volts. So obviously, in your sine wave, you're always working between in, in a 230 volt system between it's actually more like 250, 260 volts plus and minus, and and there's always a, a zero crossing point, and that's when the relays switch. But you know, relays are tend to be uh, slower than than, for example, uh, MOSFETs or things like that. So this is like a, a protection of your of your battery and uh, potentially for the overload bypass of your inverter. It doesn't mean that it should happen many times a day. This is just to ensure that your loads are always running, even if for some reason somebody turned on like the three most powerful loads at the same time. So just keep that in mind that this is this doesn't mean that you can put like uh, eight kilowatts of loads on your inverter and it doesn't matter if it you know just switches back to the grid uh, twenty times a day. Uh, but even if it does, there's a timer, so it's not going to flick back and forth all the time. It's going to stay on the grid for several minutes and then come back if possible, if the power uh, requirements have settled down. Now we have the uh, priority timers as another special feature for these devices. So uh, I've explained the, uh, the AC output source priority, so what you're powering your loads with. And then there was the battery charger source priority. So both of those uh, are, are important to set up, let's say, the basic functioning of the unit. But now you can go, go in and actually override those settings for a certain number of hours per day. So this, I think, is, is particularly valid as a scenario if you really want to, for example, force something during the night or you know exactly that there's like a, a huge load, which normally you don't have, but there's a huge load which will turn on at a certain uh, time every day. So you just preemptively want to switch to the grid or whatever. Um, and I think the, the most valid scenario, the most common scenario will be when people have different 
power tariffs uh, throughout the day. So again, my example from the very beginning of the session, uh, in, in some countries in the middle of the day, when actually there's not a high demand for power, but there's a lot of production, there's a lot of TV systems which are injected into the grid. So the power can be very cheap then. So here you can say, okay, yeah, uh, let's say from 11 o'clock in the morning to one o'clock uh, p.m., I want to automatically charge from the grid my battery because, uh, well, if my battery is not full at that time, energy is so cheap, I, I really want to have that energy for later because then it can get through the night because maybe my battery is a little bit undersized. So in, in that case, uh, you can simply set up the, uh, the battery charger source prior, priority on the bottom here, and you can set it from 11 to, uh, to 1300 hours, and like that, it will just uh, temporarily switch uh, battery charger source prior to the, to the grid, for example, for two hours every day. And uh, another special feature, and this is a, a big one because this is very rare among, let's say, off-grid oriented uh, uh, inverters, um, you'll, you'll find virtually all of the, the competitive products, they absolutely require a battery to function. Uh, the, the whole setup is, is around working with a battery. And in this case, uh, we have a, a very special topology for this unit, which actually allows functioning without a battery. So again, I, I very strongly recommend that if you work without a battery, you do have an AC source, so typically a grid. Uh, but theoretically, again, even if you don't, uh, what will happen is it will try to balance the PV power against the AC output power. So, of course, if the PV power is lower than the AC output and you have no battery and no other energy source, so you have no buffer and, and no further energy source, well, then, of course, the inverter can only turn off. Um, but if you do have uh, the public grid, uh, then the, the PV modules will deliver as much power as they can and anything that you require above that will automatically come from the public grid. And in this case, it's, it's without a, a switchover. So in this case, we are working in parallel to the grid. We're still, if you don't have uh, grid injection uh, activated, we are still ensuring that you're feeding in zero into the grid. And we're doing that by always taking a small current from the grid to avoid any reverse feed in. So that's uh, the second last point here, is that we're always ensuring that we take about 80 to 100 watts of, uh, of power from, from the grid um, to make, make sure that there's no reversal of power to inject into the grid inadvertently. Uh, we have the grid feed-in feature. I think, yeah, it's obvious what it does. Uh, as soon as you have more power that, than you can either use to charge your battery or to power your loads, that means you have excess power, and then you can uh, you can use, you can sell that power to the grid. Uh, in order to do that, you go into settings menu number eight to enable grid feed-in, and you will require a pin, and this is important so that you don't activate it by accident. Uh, a lot of grid operators would be very unhappy if you could, uh, and you will get that uh, pin number. It's a, it's a four-digit number from our uh, support team. For more videos and information, go to www.focus.com. Focus, making reliable energy access possible. Anywhere, anytime, any grid.